I decided to come back to the same spot that I filmed the previous video and if you haven't watched it I'll put a link here for the day of and I decided to tell you the results after the fact sitting in the same spot uh, where I was sitting that day before I tell you the result, I'm also going to let you know that the second part of this video is going to be just very general, high-level tips that I think really helped me uh, during my studies on this exam. Okay, so it's the moment of truth. Did I actually pass the exam or did I not? Well, I'm bringing you here at the same spot where I sat just a week ago to tell you the results. Well, because I'm having my green iced tea this time, not a matcha latte. Uh, I really like green iced tea. But I'm bringing you back here because it sort of gives you uh, a full circle of where I started and where I'm at today. So without further ado, did I pass or not? I'm happy to say I passed. I'm so excited. I'm really relieved. I can't tell you how relieved I am. I did study a lot for the exam. I did feel like I had a lot of project management experience since that was the exam I was taking. But regardless, you never know with these exams. They can be a little confusing. And as we know, they're not testing you on knowledge, but they're testing you on your ability to judge well and your, your judgment capabilities. And let's face it, if you haven't had experience in the real world, in architecture, in the field, in construction, all of that, then it's gonna be a little challenging for you. And it was for me, just because I've been in the field of aerospace and space for the last decade since I graduated uh, from college. So it's sort of like starting from scratch again. I'm, 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 I'm a baby and I'm learning how to walk again in the field that I studied in school. So a lot of this is a little intimidating. If it's intimidating for you too, if you're facing this information for the first time, or if you've been in the field, let me know below. Is it as difficult or challenging for you? What do you find challenging? On the day of, I got to the center and it was, everything was great. You know, I, I started here, I had my matcha latte, I was in really good spirits. Days leading up to it, I was meditating. Every night and every morning, I was meditating on that outcome. That's my first tip. Meditate, think about what you want to achieve from that day and you visualize the outcome of that day and you walking out of the center and how you're feeling when you're taking the exam. It's everything. And literally, that is exactly what happened. The way that I imagined it in my head leading up to that exam day was exactly what happened. I even imagined the morning of and leading up to driving to the exam center. I was gonna stop at a Starbucks. I was gonna have my drink. I was gonna stop at another little cafe while I waited. Every little thing was premeditated in my mind. And when it happened, it was like, my mind was just going through the motions. It was about to make it happen. It's powerful. I'm so meditate, visualize that day in great detail. Find a spot, like find a spot like where I'm sitting right now or wherever you feel inspired, anywhere that feels relaxing and go there. Go there on the day of, before your exam, if you can, or the night before or the day before, and just start to get into that feeling, that mindset of becoming, of having already passed the exam. And that's why, watch the video from before this video where I recorded it that morning of. Because if you watch my facial expressions and how I was exuding myself that morning, watch and notice how positive, sorry about that, I'm recording next to a street. Watch and see how positive I was. It was as if I had already passed in my mind. The second tip I want to tell you, which I think this one was truly, truly a game changer for me and, and a game changer in every aspect of life. And here's the thing. My tip is have a really strong desire as to why you want to pass this exam. And I took a couple minutes before every study session and really meditated and thought about, okay, even on the days where I truly didn't feel like studying, I thought, why am I doing this? Let me just take a second, start from a good solid foundation of why I am 
studying in the first place. It puts things into perspective. So I would think about, okay, the end result, the end goal from all of this is that I want to achieve X, Y, Z, right? And when I started to think about that, you know what happened? I got excited. I got so excited. I wanted to just nail that study session. So what is your reason for wanting to pass this next exam, whichever exam that you're going to be taking? Comment below. Let me know what your reason is. Do you have a strong enough desire? Is it worth it? Because if you don't have a strong enough desire, nothing is going to motivate you to keep studying and studying to be able to pass these exams, especially if you don't have that real world experience necessarily. And sometimes it's not even about the real world experience. It's about just test taking strategies, right? My next tip, make every minute count during your study session. Every morning before work, I woke up an hour and a half before work and studied. On my way to work, I have about a half an hour drive. I was listening to the flashcard videos. I'll put a link here. I listened to these videos nonstop while I was driving to work and at work during my lunchtime, I would also study for the exam. And on my drive back home, I would also listen to the flashcards. When I immersed myself in the information, it got to my subconscious to the point where I was like starting to dream about it. I was dreaming about some of the words that were coming up in the flashcards and thinking of ways of how I was connecting them to the real world. I listened to the flashcards as well before I slept. I would put them on really low and half an hour before I slept, I would just lay there and fall asleep to them. And I literally just did that a few nights in a row, a few mornings in a row and never played the flashcards again it was in my head. The flashcards are amazing. The other videos on this channel, the ones that I have been able to produce so far, I also did use to be able to study as well. My next tip is connect what you're learning to the real world. If you're studying material out of context, it doesn't make any sense. You can study a math problem or a physics problem or any problem. And if you don't understand why it relates or how it applies to what you're learning, you'll never be excited or interested or connect that data. I, in fact, I was like that in school. In fact, when I took a math class during undergrad, I found myself asking the professor how this topic applied. And I probably asked it a little too many times to the point where he got a little annoyed, I could tell. But I always wanted to know why I was learning this thing. Why was I learning this topic? Why trigonometry? How can I apply the area under a curve to a real world problem? And the moment I figured out how I could apply that information, another game changer. I got excited about the information. Oh, I can use it this way. So apply this technique when you're studying for these exams, for the ARE, NCARB, any of the exams. Ask yourself during your study session, why is this topic important? How does it benefit me? How am I going to encounter this in the future in order to be successful so that when I do encounter this data, in the future in a firm setting or in any other firm setting, then I know how to respond to that information. So take the moment now because it's gonna pay off later. My next tip is study the information in different ways. Yes, there have been all kinds of studies about what are the best ways that people can learn. And for me, my personal belief is from observation and experience that the best way to learn is all kinds of ways of learning and trying every method. You probably have some way of learning that really appeals to your own natural abilities. Maybe it's listening, maybe it's writing, maybe it's drawing a picture. And of course, if we're all aspiring architects here on this channel, then we probably learn really well drawing because we're visual as well. So figure out what are the different ways 
that you excel in your learning strategies and incorporate that into your everyday technique. Don't rely on just one. It's sort of like going to the gym and using the same machine. You're on the treadmill every day and that's all you use because you're like, oh, I'm comfortable with this and it works and I stay in shape. Yeah, you might stay in shape, but it's not actually working every muscle in your body. Yeah, it's good cardio, but you're not, you're not targeting all the different areas that you can be targeting in your own exercise regime. It's the same with learning. You need to exercise all the different methods in order for you to fill in the gaps in ways that one particular method may not fill in. My final point here is I think the most important point and it is this. Have fun! Have fun with the information. This is not about causing extra stress or anxiety. You've chosen to do this. You've chosen to add value to yourself, value to those around you, value in the real world. Think about at the end of all this, you're gonna be able to accomplish incredible things. So have fun with the information, enjoy it. Don't cause extra stress, there's enough stress in life. Enjoy the data, enjoy the process of learning. The exam, after all, is not testing us on whether we're this perfect architect right now. No, it's just testing us to be able to figure out if we are at the point where we're minimally prepared to be able to exercise sound judgment and, and make good decisions in the field. It's gonna be a lifelong journey. It's gonna be a lifelong learning process. No one becomes a good architect overnight. And you talk to any architect that's been in the field for years, and if you have and you're listening to this video, then let me know in the comments below, at what point did you feel where you had actually mastered all the information? And I have not met a single architect to this day, even the ones who've been in the field forever, that have claimed that they actually know everything that there is to know in the field. No, everything is constantly changing. The data, the information, codes, laws, technology, materials, building systems, everything is changing and we all need to keep up with it. So just realize that this exam is just testing your fundamental ability to make good decisions as you begin your career as a future architect. day of the exam I actually I got to the test center I sat there I relaxed uh, I pictured that moment of actually getting to the computer screen pictured the computer and the mouse and starting the exam and looking at the time and I had a moment where I was able to take my break and I took the full break I took a full 30 minute break I time to allow my mind to rest and rejuvenate and I give myself a quick little nap a quick little power nap and uh, it helps clear my mind do you do that as well? I'm curious if any of you take that full amount of time for the exam. I do. I've started to. I really enjoy taking that full time. And well, the problems were a little confusing. <laughs> and I just try to answer them to the best of my ability. One particular problem, I will say this, and it's incredible. And I, in that moment, I was like, oh, I can't believe this is happening right now. But one of the problems I just couldn't get. I just, I couldn't solve. And so I made a mental note to myself. I literally said this to myself. I don't know if I voiced it loud in the test center. I, I hope I didn't and didn't disturb anybody else around me. But I remember saying this to myself. I was like, Sarah, you're going to move on from this problem and you're going to come back to it. And, and I, order, I ordered my mind that by the time I got back to this question, I was going to solve it. And that's what happened. I left that question. I continued through. I didn't let anything stop me or, you know, take up my time. I finished that part of the exam. I came back, redid that question with a fresh mindset. Because sometimes some questions, you know, in any sort of uh, exam, whatever, whatever the exam type that you're taking, I found this to be the case throughout my life and all the exams from SATs to, you know, even this exam. Some questions later will might trigger information to help you solve the problems in the first place. So why get stuck? There's no point in, in trying to get stuck on that part of the exam. So I continued through, I came back, ordered my mind, and I got it. I just got it. 
and, and it all worked out. So by the time I got to the final screen, it said that I had passed and I, I sat there and I will tell you my emotions. I actually, I started tearing up. I started tearing up, I was very emotional because I sat there and I just, I cried. <laughs> I cried out because of tears of joy, relief, um, happiness. I, I was so proud, I was so proud of myself. Uh, I had failed this exam before and I, I didn't know. I didn't know what, what to expect. Of course, I, I try to expect the positive, but you never know with these things. So uh, I was really excited that I did. I sat there for like five minutes and just looked at the blue sentence of like, it is likely that you pass this exam. I had a bunch of friends waiting for me to greet me outside of the center, which was really, really nice. Uh, you know, just having your cheerleaders next to you, either the day of, the days before or after the day of, is really everything. Because you know that you have someone supporting you. And, and I'm so lucky I, that I've had incredible people in my life who've supported me, who believed in me and thought of me. So I'm saying this to you too. If you're on the other side of the screen, I fully believe in you. If you feel like giving up or if you feel like you can't continue with this process anymore, that you got this, you can do it. It doesn't take intelligence. It doesn't take a high IQ. It, listen to this video, uh, you know, use the tips, implement them. And if you have and start to, let me know in the comments section below if any of the things that I've mentioned have helped you or follow through on the tips that I gave you in addition to things that have worked for you in the past. Use all the lifelines. And I hope my journey in documenting this helps you uh, overcome some of the challenges and, and the mind, especially the mindset challenges. And I just know, I just know that all of you will succeed. And I wanna end on this quote, which I think is a very powerful quote by Maya Angelou. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. I wish you all success and see you in the next video.